one dark and stormless night in Cityopolis, Captain Charles Wetwin finds himself in the posh penthouse apartment of City Baker Bolton Banks, now deceased, lying in his bedroom, which has now become a crime scene. So that's it for old BB. Uh, you knew him? Yeah, only casually. I was friends with the mayor and that sort of thing. So what do we got, really? Well, it looks like death by electrocution. Piss somebody fried his brain. Yeah, two lethal jolts of electricity shot right through his eyes into his brain. Yeah, and with the killer leaving his calling card of two pennies for each eye. No doubt about it, wet one. Looks like our penny-obsessed murderer has struck again. And perhaps this killer would what the not have struck again oh, if I had been informed of his crimes earlier. Yeah, well, I thought you'd be too busy looking for Boogeyman, who still hasn't been found, night night. So. Yeah, well, it's simple, wet one. We figured, you know, Boogeyman likes to do spooky stuff and it's all scary and everything, so we figured... He'd probably wait till Halloween to make his move, and we'll be there waiting. Huh. You know, that's stupid enough to work. Nevertheless, but when Bubo and I are more than capable of handling more than one pursuit. Case in point, this curious, well, case involving pennies. Yeah, well, this is the second murder to involve the killer leaving a calling card of two pennies on the eyes of the victim. Yeah, what a moron! That's not how that works. You're supposed to put your falling out tooth underneath your pillow. And the tooth fairy takes the tooth and leaves you some money. You don't put the money on your eyes and the tooth fairy puts the tooth under your pillow. God, what a dumbass we're dealing with here. <coughs> no, boo you idiot. That's not what this signifies. In ancient times, it was often a practice to put coins on the eyes of the deceased so they could pay the ferryman their way into the afterlife. What? No, you don't pay the ferry. The ferry pays you. Now, Bobo, Mr. Banks couldn't put his tooth underneath the pillow because he kept his teeth in a cup of water on his nightstand. Huh? Oh, yeah. Anyway, we, we suspect the possible motive might involve a grudge against Bolton's bank, City City Bank. <laughs> you know, in school, we used to make fun of City City Bank because we would call it Shitty Shitty Bank. We'd always go, Shitty Shitty Bank Bank, Shitty Shitty Bank Bank. <laughs> you know, like that song about the flying cards. Oh, God damn it, Bubo, shut up! God. Now, what one? Why would you suspect the motive involves a grudge against the bank overall and not just Bolton himself? Well, because of the previous victim, a woman by the name of Taylor Teller. And how does she fit into all of this? Well, she was a teller. I understand her family lineage, but, when, but that doesn't explain her connection to a grudge against City City Bank. I mean, she was a Tell her at the bank. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. But perhaps you've missed the obvious here. Wet one. Her name was Teller, and she was a Teller. Therefore, she was silenced and prevented from telling what she knew. Yeah. Doesn't anybody teach people the Tooth Fairy rules no more? I mean, this dumbass left a note for the Tooth Fairy. That ain't gonna work. Oh, God damn it! What the hell are you talking about, Bubo? Man, there's a note under that glass full of false teeth. What the hell? Let me see that. Hmm. What? This appears to be a note from the killer. It says, Penny, for your thoughts, Mr. Banks. Signed, The Penny Pincher. Oh man, damn it, really? Your guys couldn't find that. Well, I didn't want to go near the teeth in the cup. What would they, they, they creep me out? You're in a room with a dead body with a fried brain, but the false teeth in a glass that that creeped you out. 
What's even more creepy but when, is the reality that we will have more victims if we don't put a stop to this penny pincher. For City City Bank has several more employees. Well, you got a point there, Night Night. And what's even more disturbing is that, uh, well, we owe the discovery of this important clue to Bubo. Oh, no. Is this true? Could the fate of the employees of City City Bank be in the gloved hands of Bubo? Find out in the next exciting episode of Night Night. This has been a Nail Sin production. The Night Night theme song is performed by Alistair White and his lovely wife, Heather. Incidental music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod. All characters are performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Join us again, won't you? <laughs>